jump sticks. Hi guys, I'm Sarah. Welcome to my car channel. And this is Forster Gump. <laughs> I'm so cringeworthy. Anyway, for those of you who are new to my channel, this is my 2015 Subaru Forester XT, who I call Forester Gump. The question I get asked the most is why a Forester XT? Why did I choose this over a WRX or over a STI or over a BRZ or any other Subaru or any other car for that matter? When it came to buying a daily driver, something that was really important to me was a hatchback. Hi, I'm Scotty Kilmer's daughter. <laughs> I'm joking. There's people over there on their balcony watching me and they're probably wondering what the hell drugs I'm on right now. As you can see, there's tons of room for cargo back here. The utility of a hatchback is hard to beat. And I started looking at the Forester. And at first I was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to buy a Forester XT now that it only has the CVT transmission. They don't have a manual transmission option for the SJ generation Forester XT. You could get it in the non-turbo Forester with the 2.5 liter NA boxer engine. However, if you want the FA20 DIT, which is the engine found in the Forester XT as well as the 15 and up Deborah X's it can only be paired with a linear tronic CVT and at the time I was like nope that's not gonna happen I am NOT buying an automatic let alone I am NOT buying a CVT and then this happened and when I test drove this Forester I don't know how to describe it but it grew on me this thing had character and I soon found myself smiling when I was driving it and I started looking at everything the car had to offer. I was like, man, this does make a good daily driver. It's comfortable as hell. I can haul a bunch of stuff in the back. Sometimes you just want to lay in the back of your car. There's so much room for activities back here. Giggity. So it grew on me and I ended up buying Forrester Gump. And yes, I named him Forrester Gump. I don't know why. I just, it's a Forrester and it came out of my mouth one day. I was like, Forrester Gump. And I just rolled with it. So, power mods. What I have done as far as power goes on my Forrester XT is I have a Pro Tune from Ray at TurboTech Tuning. Basically what he does, because he's located on the East Coast and I'm in Arizona, is it is an E-Tune. Now there are pros and cons to E-Tunes, but for me, the pros were the fact that I had a tuner that could tune my car and where I lived, I just didn't have anyone that I wanted to go with for the tune. So Ray had really high recommendations for working with the FA20 engine and I went with him. J-pipe, which on the SJ Generation Forester and VA Generation WRX, it is called a J-pipe just because of the location of the turbo on these cars. Let me sum this up for you. The turbo on this FA20 is located in front of the oil pan, whereas on the EJ powered Foresters, it was located over here on the passenger side of the firewall. Unless it was right hand drive, that would be the driver's side of the firewall. That's so confusing. Same spot, but the driver moves. Got it. Anyway, the difference is because the turbo is located on the front center of the engine on this one, it has equal length exhaust manifolds, whereas the EJ engine, the turbo is located off to the side, so it had an unequal length exhaust manifold because it was a longer distance from the other side of the engine over to this side where the turbo was located. So that's why this one doesn't have the burble sound. <laughs> I really missed that at first, but I've actually grown to like this one. And with the burbles and pops on my tune, it kind of makes up for it. It's a little obnoxious, but I don't care. I'm a little obnoxious. I did try swapping out the mid pipe on here with a 15 and up WRX mid pipe, which is non resonated. And it was so incredibly loud paired with my nameless muffler deletes that I swear I thought my neighborhood was gonna have an intervention because this thing was ridiculous. I 
cut it down a little bit, but no. In addition to that, I also have an EGR delete. As far as handling mods go, I have the VA Generation STI rear sway bar, which is a 20 millimeter sway bar compared to the stock Forster one, which is a 16 millimeter sway bar. I have a pair of ultra racing front and rear strut bar bars, which when they were paired with the upgraded rear sway bar, it made a huge difference in the handling of this car. It's really stiff now, and I like it stiff. You can take that however you want. As far as the wheels and tires go, I have Pro Drive GT ones, and they're 18 by 7.5, 48 millimeter offset, and they're in matte anthracite. I went with Yokohama Adman Sport all season tires in 245 50 18s because I do drive this thing in the snow in the wintertime. I like to go up to the mountains with it because it's a Subaru and that's just what you're supposed to do with a Subaru. In addition to that, the Japanese and Australian markets got the Forrester STI TS edition, which it didn't really have any different mechanical options other than the fact that it had a CVT cooler, Brembo brakes, and some different suspension tweaks, but power-wise, it was still the same. It did have a lot of exterior differences though and STI interior, so because that wasn't offered in the States, I was like, challenge accepted. Downside was it cost more for shipping just to get this from Japan than it did for the actual lip. I also wrapped the chrome surround on the grill, metallic black, add the STI badge and the cherry blossom pink striping that goes along the bottom of the grill. I followed that through onto the mirror caps with metallic black wrap as well as the chrome belt line trim. And I followed through with the cherry blossom pink stripe on the bottom of the bumper. If I really wanted to be a purist, I would have also wrapped the rear wing with the metallic black, but I'm not that skilled of a vinyl wrapper. The headlights, although covered in bugs right now, are retrofitted with Morimoto D2S projectors that I did myself, but it took four days to do and I will never do it again. Mechanically, it was pretty much the same. I just had to add the Brembos and some suspension goodies, which I haven't done the Brembos yet. I really want to do the Brembos. And as far as the braking goes, well, there's no one out here. Let's test it. Yep. The Forrester XT has what is called SI Drive, and what SI Drive is, is a control that adjusts the shift points in the transmission as well as throttle response and some other techie weird crap that doesn't really matter because it doesn't make that big of a difference. But in intelligent mode, it keeps it like a traditional CVT, it doesn't shift, keeps it in the peak power band. When you move it over into sport, it allows you to simulate six different gears. And actually does a pretty good job at simulating the gears. I'm gonna have to give Subaru credit. It, it's decent. And then when you put it in sport sharp, it simulates eight different gears. So it makes it like an eight speed manual. And what the good thing is with Sport Sharp is when you move the drive selector over into manual mode, it'll actually hold until you shift. So you can bounce off rev governor, you can downshift, and the downshifts are actually pretty quick on this thing. I'm giving it credit where it's due. That's why I said this thing is tolerable. <sighs> Gump sticks. I think the combination of having these 245 width tires and the upgraded rear sway bar and strut tower bars, it makes this thing handle extremely well. Ooh, little burbles and pops off the bottom. I won't say how fast that is, but it's quick. <laughs> this guy is no joke. I'm telling you, Forster Gump is pretty quick for what it is. It's pretty quick in general. I'll give it credit. for me to ever swap a six-speed manual into this from either a WRX or an STI, it will be done. 
I hands down will swap this thing if I can. Now, in this generation, the SJ Generation Forester XT, it is not as easy to just swap a manual into it as it was in the past, like SF, SG, SH Generation Foresters, where it was really interchangeable between the Impreza and the Forester. On the SJ, and I don't really know a whole lot of the details on this, but I believe it has to do with the CAN bus system is what creates a difficulty trying to swap a manual into this. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm sure there's someone out there that could do it, but for the time being, it's kind of out of my means and capabilities to put a manual in this thing. So for those of you who have seen my videos in the past, you know I do a score of one to five beans based on how many beans the car can supply you to then give. That's about how that works. Anyway, Forrester Gump, he gets a score of two beans. You get two beans, Forrester Gump. He gets two beans because, I mean, it is pretty quick for what it is. The butt dyno says around 250 wheel horsepower and I've never ran it at the track. We have a horrible DA here in Tucson, so it'd be a lot slower here than it would at sea level. And I don't really want to speculate how fast it is because I don't care, it's my Forrester Gump. He's special just the way he is. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye. That's a really big bee. I, I surrender. Why, why do I have to dress like a bee? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, no, no. Go away. Go away. No, <laughs> go away.